Now let us see the mountains. In case of mountains, we see the plants and trees that are specially shaped. I told you that they have a shape of this particular kind. So why this kind? So when there is a heavy rainfall and snowfall, the snow should not stay on the branches of the tree. So they cannot breathe, they die. So the snow, whatever falls on the trees, it should get easily slides off. When it gets slides off, when the tree is having a slope. So that is the reason they have slopey branches like this. So when there is a heavy snowfall, even though the snow covers the tree, because of the little gentle wind, the snow easily sheds off because of the slope. So that kind of arrangement is seen in the plants or trees that are found in the mountains. Right. So whereas you see in case of animals that are found in the mountain, you see the yak. It has got a thick skin and a coat of fur. The animals that live in the cold mountain conditions, snow mountains, they have fur on their bodies. The fur is a very good insulator. It does not allow your body heat to escape. The fur gives protection to the animal. So we find the furry animals in the snowy places where there is snowfall. The climate is very cool. Even the soil on which they are walking is ice cold. So even their feet are covered by the fur. Right. So the fur of the animals, the fleece of the animals obtained from the mountain regions is used to make the woolen garments. So which keeps us warm. So we can write that yak and a snow leopard. Snow leopard. You see the snow leopard, snow leopard also having fur. Even its feet are covered by the fur so that it can walk in the snowy places. Right. And uh, we see mountain goat. So the mountain goat, it has got very strong hooves. Strong hooves. So by that it can climb the rocky mountains. So to climb the rocky mountains, it needs to have very strong hooves. So these hooves help the goat to climb the rocks. So that kind of adaptation is seen in the mountains. So there are a plenty of animals and plants that are found only a few are discussed here. Right. So the next thing we go to the grasslands. So now let us see the grasslands. When we talk about the grasslands here, we are talking about two animals, lion and deer. So always we like to watch the lion or tiger chasing the deer in the National Geographic channel. So there the hunting process goes on. It's a very natural process where a predator chases a prey. So prey, it always tries to escape from the predator to survive. The predator tries to catch the prey to get its food. It's a part of the chain, food chain that is found in the nature where a predator eats the prey. So here if you see the, these two animals and their adaptations, how these adaptations help these animals to survive in their particular habitat. What is the habitat? Grassland. So grassland, the name itself tells that there is a lot of grass. So the animals, mostly they are grass colored, light brown. So light brown is a dried grass, hay color, light brown color, lime or deer. So by that they can hide in the grass, they can escape. They can hide in the grass, the lion can hide in the grass. So here I am writing body color. It can hide in the grass and whenever the prey it comes, suddenly it can jump and attack. So for hunting purpose, the body color helps it. So the body color itself is an adaptation. And the next thing, the lion, it has got strong body. Strong body, sharp claws, which it can bring the sharp claws in its front legs, four legs. They have got very sharp claws, which it can draw from the toes. It can bring them out from the toes. So that is all an adaptation to catch the prey. And the lion, it has got eyes. The position of the eyes, they are 
in front of the face not on the sides you see an animal like a cow goat deer they have eyes on their sides whereas the lion tiger they have eyes in front of their face because they need to target the prey the prey is running so the animals the predators focus is to be at the prey then only it can catch so for a focused vision these predators they have eyes positioned in front of the face in front of the face so that is the adaptation that is found in the lion they have a sharp teeth so by that they can tear the flesh they can bite they are very strong so by that they can pull very big animal they can drag the animal all these are the body features that help the lions to hunt whereas the deer the deer it has got a light body so by that it can run so fast light body the deer has got long ears long ears so by the long ears so by the big ears it can hear each and every sound about its death the predator that comes up to eat it so it can sense the danger when it has got a very good sense of hearing it can sense the sounds it can estimate from which direction the animal is going to attack very thin legs so by that it can jump over the huddles it can jump over the branches and logs and rocks by that it can escape thin legs light body and it has got eyes on sides of its head eyes position so by that in 360 degrees it can sense the danger it can see the danger so it has got its features to protect itself escape from the enemy escape from the predator the predator itself has got the features to catch the prey so in the nature the creatures they have got their own special features right so that the point is that which one is going to make the living over here if it is a natural setup without any human intervention the nature is very well balanced the ecosystem is very well balanced very well maintained the number of tigers the number of deer the number of elephants the number of bears everything is maintained so well nothing goes to extinction unless under drastic changes happens in the environment but because of the human intervention we are causing and creating a lot of disturbance in the ecosystem by disturbing the food chains and food webs right so here all the creatures they have the special features to adapt to live in a particular climate so we have seen the terrestrial habitats in this we can observe the different animals they have different features so having a special feature to live in a particular habitat is called as adaptation so animals they developed these special features in a particular habitat over a very long period of time it, it doesn't it didn't happen in one or two days over a long period of time they started developing these special features to live in that so the organisms which could not develop the special features they become extinct or died which could able to develop the special features they are existing right so after completing this terrestrial habitats let us move to the aquatic habitats so now let us look at the aquatic habitats in that the first one we are going to see that oceans the animals that live in the ocean they have the special feature like streamlined bodies so streamlined bodies that means they have a pointed snout all the fish you can see that they have a snout and they have a compressed body so by that easily they can move in the water they have the fins to swim and they have a tail to change the direction of their swim so the body is streamlined by which it can move from place to place their body is covered by tough skin and scales so by that they can withstand the high pressure of water they can withstand the saltiness of the sea that is salinity so the fish they take the dissolved oxygen by the gills gills help the fish to get the oxygen from the water because fish they live in the water they need to depend on the oxygen that is dissolved in the water so that is absorbed by the gills 
by which they can take. There are certain fish like creatures generally we assume that they are fish but they are not fish they live in the water like dolphins and whales those are the mammals dolphins and whales then how do they breathe they don't have gills then how can they breathe in the water how do they get the oxygen these dolphins and whales they have blow holes on their snout so they come to the surface of the water quite often to get the air from the atmosphere to get the oxygen from the atmosphere because they do not have gills to get the oxygen from the water so the dolphins and whales they quite often come to the surface of the water for breathing they keep their snout out and take the air in they go deep into the sea for a very long time they need not breathe again they can live under that and again when they need oxygen they come back that means once they take the air you see how much big air large quantity of air they are taking because that air should be sufficient for the whale or dolphin to go into the water and come back after some time so they can spend some time without breathing because they take lot of air into their blow holes and lungs they go deep into the sea and again they will come back to get the air so they come to the surface for breathing they have blow holes right because dolphins and whales they are not the fish they are the mammals okay so this is about the adaptations in ocean now let us see in case of the ponds and lakes in ponds and lakes we observe mostly the plants different kinds of plants right so the surface of the this is the surface of the pond this is the bottom of the pond where there is some mud we can see different types of plants in the ponds some plants they have their roots fixed in the soil under the pond under the water and from here the stems are very hollow and thin stems and the leaves and flowers are outside like this so these kind of plants we observe in the ponds they have the root system generally the plants that live in the soil terrestrial plants also have the root system but the roots the function of the roots in the land plants is to absorb the minerals but here the function of the roots of this aquatic plants is to just keep them in position hold the position right so some of the water plants they are completely submerged they are completely under the water their leaves are very thin and ribbon like so by that they are not damaged by the water currents their roots are also fixed in the soil completely submerged some plants they are totally floating and their roots are also just in the water they are not fixed to the soil like this they are the floating plants so we have floating plants we have submerged plants we have plants that roots are fixed in the soil and the plant is above the surface of the water so these kind of plants we observe in ponds and lakes if you see the animals we find so many types of animals we can find the fish even in the pond the most interesting animal that we find here is frog frogs they live in the pond and outside the pond they can live inside the pond outside the pond they have the long back legs for jumping to catch the prey the frog it has got a long tongue long back legs it has got webbed feet and it has got wet skin so with the help of wet skin it can breathe even in the water because of the long legs it can take a very long leap jump to catch the prey it can jump in the pond from one lotus leaf to the other lotus leaf somewhere away it can jump and catch the prey it has got wet skin so all these features helps the frogs to live inside and outside the pond right so these are the adaptations that are found in the plants and animals that live in ponds and lakes and in oceans so we have seen the habitat organisms and non living things that make up the habitat so environment is made up of a biotic and abiotic components biotic means plants and animals microorganisms abiotic means soil 
rocks, water and uh, temperature, humidity all these come under the abiotic components. So, here how can you say that this is abiotic and this is biotic? In very simple terms abiotic means non-living, biotic means living. How can you say that this is non-living and this is living? On basing which category, characteristics you can divide that? So, we can do such kind of classification on basing certain characteristics. So, here we have a list of characteristics on basing which we can say that one particular thing whether it is a living or a non-living. Here the list goes like this need food, grow, respire, respond to stimulus, excrete, reproduce and move. So, all these are the characteristics of living beings. So, let us check whether these are really the characteristics of living beings or whether these are the characteristics of any non-living thing. Need food each and every organism on this planet needs food whether it is a plant, animal or a microbe. It needs food to get the energy to grow to repair its body to live. A rock does it need any food? No. A rock it does not need any food. Your book does it need any food? No. Without food also it can be there. But whereas a dog it needs food. If you do not give food to the dog for few days it will die. Right? Plant it needs food. You have to pour some water and it needs sunlight. If you cut the sunlight and water the plant will die. So, without the food it cannot plant it makes its own food with the help of sunlight and water. So, living organisms for sure they need food without food they cannot live. So, the main aim of each and every living organism is to obtain its food. All the animals every day they go in search of their food to get the food to live. All the plants they carry out photosynthesis making of food in their leaves so by that they can get the food. So, it is the most important characteristics of living thinking is that all living things they need food to survive. Even you need food to survive and your food is provided by your parents. They are earning money and buying the things to make the food. They are cooking and providing you the food. Right. See that just imagine how hard it will be being without food for a day. It is very hard. You cannot. Right. So, it is the most important characteristic feature of living beings that they need food. Second thing is that growth, every living organism it grows, right. So, you are growing, you see that just you compare with your last year height before last year just you go through your album and see the photographs. So, after like uh, just you go back some 3 to 4 years how you were, you will be amazed by seeing that, right. Just you see the photographs of your mother and father when they were small their childhood photographs. So, when the baby is grown the baby it grows to infant to a kid and to an adult and to an old man. So, growth happens continuously right. So, growth in the sense not only increase in the height. So, you may grow in your height up to some age after that also you grow there will be so many changes in your body even though your height is not increased. But growth is an indication of life, living thing. Plants and trees they grow, they grow so tall. The trees they grow continuously, very right, not like other animals. They grow, they increase in their height for a very long time. The growth is continuous. The plants they grow. Rock, does it grow? No. You cannot find any growth in the rock. Chair and table, do they grow? No, they don't they does not grow. So, they are not living things. The things that grow are living things. So, grow is the growth is the another characteristics of living things. All plants and animals and microbes all these things they grow in size, they grow in height, they grow in size overall size. So, that is found. Now, let us come to the third one respiration is the another important characteristic of the living thing. As we have discussed here living things they need food of course, we need food 
but without respiration we can't make use of that food we can't even live for few minutes all the animals they need to breathe oxygen we need to get oxygen from the surroundings animals that are living on the land they get the oxygen from the environment from the air we take the air from the air we absorb the oxygen the animals living in the water they absorb the oxygen from the water so not only animals even the plants that are living they need oxygen plants they have the leaves leaves they have the stomata through which they absorb the gases plants they absorb even carbon dioxide also to make their food they absorb oxygen also for living so respiration is a process that happens in the living things which provide us energy